wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So good to be here this morning. Are you blessed to be in the house of God this morning? Are you ready to uh, try and conclude this morning? Well, I don't think we're going to conclude this morning. I'd rather just start off by saying that. I came in prepared to conclude, but the Holy Spirit changed a few things while I was in my office. And so I'm just going to listen to the voice of God, if that's okay with you this morning. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Therefore, we also, but we're going to stick with the title, don't worry. And we're going to talk about faith. It's been a journey of faith. How many of you have been stuck in this journey with me? You've got to be able to enjoy the journey. Christ took time to enjoy his journey, and you and I need to do the same. The creator himself enjoyed his life journey, and so I need you and I to be able to enjoy our life's journey. And so we've been looking at the book of Hebrews. We started with chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through to 2, and then we anchored in chapter 11. And this morning it was my intention to combine the two as I close, but... Uh, I'm going to read it, but I don't think we're going to close this morning, okay? So don't hold your breath. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm going to read from verse number 39. And we're going to finish at chapter 12, verse number 2. So keep your fingers on both those pages this morning. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Therefore we also, this is chapter 12, verse number 1, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. May God bless the reading of his precious word this morning. Amen. Amen. So we are intending to conclude, therefore we also. And verse number 39 of Hebrews chapter 11 says, All these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. And you'll remember that we've looked at quite a few people over the last few weeks. We started with looking at, as an individual, Abel, and his journey of faith as he offered. We looked at Enoch, and his journey of faith as he was taken. We looked at Noah, and his journey of faith as God moved him in godly fear, and he began to prepare the ark. We looked at Abraham and his journey of faith as he obeyed and was tested and then offered up his son. And the Bible further continues to say that he sojourned. He did not receive what God had promised him in terms of the land that God had promised him, but he sojourned. We looked at Sarah and her journey of faith as she received strength to conceive seed. We looked at Isaac, his journey of faith as he blessed his sons and Jacob, his journey of faith was slightly different. He blessed his grandsons. We looked at Joseph, and his journey of faith is a big one. But the book of Hebrews talks about how he mentions the departure of Israel from the nation of Egypt and how he gave instructions concerning his bones. We looked at Moses, and his journey of faith started off with somebody else hiding him. That's powerful, you know that? His journey of faith was based on somebody else hiding him. He chose affliction. He forsook Egypt, kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood. Do you know that that's all a part of a journey of faith? As we started to conclude about the nation of Israel and how they passed through the Red Sea, all by faith. How they encircled the walls of Jericho, all by faith. We spoke about the harlot Rahab and her journey of faith. A journey of faith was her not perishing. A harlot, Rahab. We talked about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, David, Samuel, and the prophets. And they subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of aliens. We 
paused on women that received their dead raised to life again. And that we did on a Wednesday night. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. I mean, that, that, was, that was very difficult to swallow. How many of you found that difficult to swallow? I found it difficult to swallow. I can't deny that. They were scourged, chained, imprisoned, stoned, sawn in two, tempted, killed, wandered in sheepskins and goatskins, on mountains, in dens and caves, destitute, afflicted, and tormented. And so when the Bible's talking about these, it's talking about all of these. Not one or two, every single one of the people that we've been looking at over the last few weeks as we drift into conclusion, the Bible is saying all of these. And what's similar or the same for all of them? Having obtained a good testimony through faith. Do you know that when you talk about faith, your journey of faith is for this reason. No other reason but for you to obtain a good testimony through faith. You see, people are thinking that they'll obtain healing through faith. People are thinking they're going to obtain wealth through faith. People are thinking that they're going to obtain a husband, a wife through faith. But the Bible teaches me that this is what all of these obtain. Not one, not two. Every single one of them, what did they obtain? A good testimony through faith. And a good testimony is not dependent on me getting my victory. A good testimony is not dependent on me getting my financial breakthrough. A good testimony is not dependent on me getting my healing. A good testimony is not me dependent on me getting the wife that I prayed about or the husband that the ladies are praying about or the children that you prayed about. Having obtained a good testimony through faith. But here's where... It's complicated, and, and God wanted me to anchor on this a little bit. I didn't realize that this was going to be really the basis of what I'm going to talk to you about this morning. Did not receive the promise. Does your Bible say, did not receive the promise, or did receive the promise? What does your Bible say? Did not receive the promise. Wow. How can you get... A good testimony without receiving the promise. People are stuck on stuff that doesn't matter. We're stuck on things that we're going to leave behind. Whether it's your wealth or whether it's your six pack that you're working so hard to get. All of that you're going to leave behind. How many of you know that? Whether it's the real hair you got or the wig you went and bought. All of it you're going to leave behind. How many of you know that? Whether it's the real blue eyes God gave you or you're looking through contact blue eyes here in the house of God this morning, all of it you're going to leave behind. How many of you know that? Whether it's the degree that you boast about and you plaster on your wall or the fact that you left school, you never even finished school, all of it you're going to leave behind. How many of you know that? Whether you pushed your car into the yard this morning, you had to get Solomon to help you push it into the yard and park it off there, or whether you revved it like it's nobody's business and drove into the car park this morning, all of it you're going to leave behind. How many of you know that? Amen. If I had to take my fingernail and go and scratch every one of those buttes parked outside there, how many of you would still come to this church next week? Only one always saying Amen. Only one who is saying amen. What happened next year? What happened, boss? Because you polished the cab now. Can't I scratch that thing? I'll go scratch it now. The Bible says, having obtained a good testimony, did not receive the promise. Every single one of them obtained a good testimony. Every one of them we spoke about, whether it was the the, the patriarch who is Father Abraham or the harlot called Rahab, the whore, every one of them obtained a good testimony, but they did not receive the promise. But now that's a bit strange, don't you think? Because as I started our conclusion two weeks ago, and as I looked at Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, the Bible says that they obtained promises. How many of you remember that? The Bible says they obtained 
promises. Obtained promises. But then it concludes now here by saying all of them did not receive the promise. I want to bring to your attention here this morning. There's a big difference between promises that you've obtained and the promise that you ought to receive. You see, I have people obtaining the promises, all God's promises, but they don't receive the promise. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse number 20. Somebody turn there. Mm -hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and sup with him, and he with me. Did not receive the promise. Some people are going to say to me, Myron, what promise are you talking about? I'm talking about the promise above all promises. I'm talking about the one that ought to be the main thing as you come into this house called Harbor Lights Tabernacle. I did not bring you here this morning at 9 o'clock on a Sunday to talk to you about the promises you want to obtain, but I brought you here this morning to talk to you about the one that you ought to receive. He knocks at your heart's door. Do you know him? You know what he does, but do you know him? You know that he's given you the promises that you've sought after, that you looked for. He's helped you obtain those promises. But do you know him? Oh, it gets quieter as I say, do you know him? It gets quieter as I ask you, do you know him? You know about the car that you prayed for. You know about the husband you prayed for. You know about the wife you prayed for. You know about the job, the business. You know about the prosperity that you prayed for. But do you know him? He knocks at your heart's door. He's knocking at the very thing he gave you in the first place. My God help me. Since when did the owner need to knock? Help me Lord, help me Lord, help me Lord. Can you hear what the Spirit of God is saying here this morning? Since when did the owner need to knock? When I go to my house, I don't knock. Why? I am the owner. It is mine. But here we have the owner knocking. Oh, we are far. When the owner needs to knock and wait for people to hear him, to open up to what he owns. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. He put treasure inside. Now he's got to knock to get to the treasure that he stored up inside. We've been talking about faith. Faith without salvation is meaningless. I meet people who know how to operate in faith, but they're not saved. Your stuff doesn't determine whether you're saved or not. Your testimony of faith and what you've obtained by faith and through faith is not the evidence of salvation. The Bible says, did not receive the promise. The evidence of salvation is not that I got healing. The evidence of salvation is not that I got delivered. The evidence of salvation is not that I got the breakthrough that I prayed for. You have your Bible still? Okay. Now you need to do some turning this morning. Turn to the book of Luke chapter 16. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 16, I, I touched on it last week, but this morning as I was praying in the office there and I was just going through some of the things God had asked me to say, he made me stop at this point and he made me relook at the rich man and Lazarus. And I want to read it to you this morning. This is what it says. This is a parable that Jesus speaks of. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. Mm. How many of you want to fare sumptuously every day? Mm. How many of you pray that you fare sumptuously every day? You see how the devil has tricked you into thinking that you're going to heaven. This is all you pray for. Lord bless me. Sumptuously every day. Well, there's a man whose prayers have been answered. 
A certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. Verse number 20. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Now we've got a man that fares sumptuously every day. And then we've got another man who has a desire. What's his desire? What's his desire? His desire is, give me some crumbs. Hmm. What's your desire? <laughs> As I have now accepted that today is not the conclusion. As I look at that big timer that's in front of me. You know how to recite this verse. He grants my heart's desires. How many of you know how to recite this verse? I've heard the prosperity teachers teach this thing. But Jesus teaches a parable. We have the rich man. We've got the beggar called Lazarus. The rich man, he's chowing, he's dressed well, lives a top life. And then we've got Lazarus. And what's Lazarus' desire? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. What's Lazarus' desire? I want to ask you here this morning, Hubbleites, examine your desires right now. Right now. Your desire will keep you out of heaven or it will take you to heaven. Lazarus' desire is not success. Now mind you, as I preach to you, I have great ambition. Let me tell you. I am not somebody that stands here without ambition. Even now at the what is becoming a ripe age, it's becoming a riper age, I still have ambition. But my desire, uh, I'll eat the crumbs. You know why? I want to get to heaven. The Bible says, watch it now. Desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. Those that reject deliverance. I was talking to you about that last week. Those that reject deliverance will still be soothed. It won't be soothing like you might see on Facebook. It won't be this diamond lifestyle of soothing. But God will use the dogs to soothe the wounds of the child of God whose heart is fixed on him. So the Bible says that the dogs were soothing his sores. So it was the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The beggar died. What happened to the beggar? He's carried by angels. He's carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. Okay? Right. The rich man also died and was buried. I don't desire to be buried when I die. I desire to be carried when I die. I don't care about the burial, brother. I, I, don't, I don't care about how many hearses are going to come here, how many of these winged cars are going to come here, flapping wings. Uh, uh, the only wings I want to hear is the angel's wings. I, I don't want to be buried. I want to be carried. Let the dead bury the dead, but the living, they are carried by angels. The Bible says that both die. The rich man gets buried. The beggar gets carried by angels. And he is deposited into the bosom of Abraham. When I die, there will be one deposit. It won't be the earth here. It will be Abraham's bosom. From whence I came. Because when Melchizedek stood before Abraham and he received the tithe from Abraham and uh, he blessed Abraham, the book of Hebrews says that in the loins of Abraham I was there. I do not go back to the ground. I go back to Abraham's bosom because I am a spirit being. Let the dead bury the dead. If you are flesh, you will be buried. But if you're a spirit being, you will be deposited into the bosom of Abraham. I'm still teaching on faith this morning. The Bible says both died. Angels pick up one. The other one is buried. Verse number 23. 
And being in torments in Hades, hmm, the rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, you know when the word torment is not enough, and when you have to pluralize a word like torment and say torments in Hades, you know, you know you're in a bad place. You want to talk about torment on the earth? There are torments awaiting the rich man who never looked towards Lazarus. The Bible says, And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Mm. My God, hell will look for me one day. And they will find me in the bosom of Abraham. When hell has to find you, will they even have to look for you? The Bible says, now he's looking. And he looks and he sees Father Abraham. And in his bosom is Lazarus. He's got good sight, this guy. He's got good sight. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, my God, Abraham still calling him son. That's why he's the patriarch. Mm, that's why he's the great father, Abraham. He's still calling this guy in hell son. You still have an opportunity this morning, sons and daughters. But there will come a time when you will no longer be called son or daughter. Oh my, be careful. Abraham is still calling him son, but I would dare say that there will be no sons or daughters of the king of kings and the lord of lords in hell. Abraham says, son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things. Hmm. How many of you are receiving good things this morning? Mm. Smarties boxes, you here still this morning? Don't say amen, say aina. Aina, aina, aina. Let me read that one again. Remember, in your lifetime, you received good things. I will accept nothing good that costs me eternity. I refuse to apply my faith. To something that will take me away from heaven. I refuse to apply my faith to something that will take me to Hades and not the bosom of Abraham. Oh my. The Bible says, watch this. Remember that in your lifetime you received good things. And it doesn't say good things. Hey, remember. I'm preaching to you just as God is speaking to me this morning. I didn't prep on this. So stay with me. It says you received your good things. That's why the Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich and adds no sorrow. You are talking about whether you're feeling misery or sorrow on the earth. I came to remind you that heaven will determine whether you are miserable or sorrowful or whether you received a good thing. Not earth. You are equating good and bad to what you know on earth. That is a lie from the devil himself. You don't know good. You think good is because my tire is bone the outside. My car sparkles. I dress with the best. You think you've arrived with good. You don't know good. Because all you know is what the world has taught you about good. The Bible teaches me about good. Here it is. Here it is. You received what you prayed for. You received all your good things while you were on the earth. Watch this now. And likewise, Lazarus evil things. Oh, hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. I'm a child of the most high God. How dare I not get the good things? How can it be that the Bible says, Lazarus is in heaven, let me remind you, the rich man is in hell. The rich man, when he's on the earth, he gets all his good things. Lazarus gets every evil thing. What? 
What? What? For I'm the head and not the tail. I must be above and not beneath. But Lazarus is underneath the table. <sighs> Waiting for crumbs. Understand how you get to the position that God has called you to be in. The Bible says, Lazarus receives evil. Evil. While he's on the earth. Watch it now. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. You see the 70 plus years that God will give me on this planet. He's promised me 70, but when I look at my father, I look at his bloodline, I think it's highly likely I'll live till 120. <laughs> you laugh, you laugh, watch me. I'll bury every one of you. <laughs> watch me, watch me. The Bible says, what? 70 years plus anything else on grace on top of that versus eternity. I'll take the 70 years of evil with a smile on my face because I'm not living for here. I'm living for there. You don't know where you're living for. All these prosperity devils have taught you that heaven is on earth. Now mind you, as I, as I talk to you, I have a house. I don't live in a cave. As I talk to you, I have three vehicles parked in my yard. I don't walk and thumb and hitchhike. As I talk to you, I'm not wearing, well, some of you might say he's wearing goat skins compared to what you're wearing. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I have a dual citizenship. But my dual citizenship is not focused on earth where I am now. I am a citizen of heaven. First and foremost, are you a citizen of heaven? Oh, hold it now, hold it now. Your prayer life determines whether you're a citizen of heaven. Crumbs, desire, or Gucci, desire. Diamonds, desire, or I'll buy a wire and I'll tie it up. Desire. Because either way, it's both rings. Some of you, you don't want to get married because you can't afford the ring. You're living in sin because you can't afford to buy the ring. Take a wire, make it round. Polish it. Put it on a finger. Get to heaven. My faith is fixed on one thing. That's why when my son was on his deathbed, I spoke to him about eternity first and foremost. I spoke to my family about heaven first and foremost. I know every scripture in the Bible concerning healing. But I'll take the crumbs and get to heaven over healing and then die in hell. I'll be Lazarus any day. You've been Lazarus your whole life. <laughs> I'll be Lazarus any day. And I'll get to heaven. What am I saying? Am I saying you shouldn't be ambitious? Am I saying you shouldn't accumulate wealth? I am saying that you should accumulate wealth in heaven. I am saying you've missed the mark, child of God. You've applied faith to stuff that takes you nowhere quickly. The Bible says, watch it now. But now he is comforted. Mm. I will be comforted in heaven. I will be comforted in heaven. Not on earth. And you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that those who want to pass from here to you cannot. Nor can those... From their pass to us. Imagine having a gulf between heaven and hell. Just so that you can view what you missed out on. I want to remind you here, Harbourites. It is not Lazarus looking into hell. But it is the rich man. The one who dominated and was large and in charge on the earth. Who's looking into heaven. So the gulf exists not for those in heaven to look into hell, but the, for those from hell to look for eternity into heaven and understand what you've missed out on. I don't care whether you take me to the best restaurants or we go through Kentucky drive through and you buy me chips and that's all you give me. I want to see you in heaven. If you cannot apply your faith for heaven, you are applying your faith for nothing. If you cannot apply your faith to save your son and daughter, to save your wife who's not saved, to save your husband that's not saved, 
you have no faith. Bible says, this is Lazarus. This is the rich man. There's a gulf between them. No one can pass through it. Verse number 27, then he said, I beg you therefore, father. Now you want to call Abraham your father. I want you to know, call out to your father now. Don't call out to your father when it's too late. I want you to understand the rich man never called him father when he was on the earth. But now when he's in hell, he's looking for a father. Find your father now. Hubbleites, I'm talking to you. Find your father now. Don't die an illegitimate child. Find your father now. And I'm not talking about your earthly father. I'm talking about the father who is in heaven. Our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Come your kingdom come. The Bible says, he says my father. Hmm. You can call for mommy. You can call for nanny, you can call for amma, papa, even uncle dick. Nobody is coming for you. Call now while you can be saved. Stop crying for money. Stop crying for healing. Stop crying for victory. Cry for salvation. I need to hear people of God that will call upon the name of the Lord, not for healing, not for money, not for peace of mind, but for salvation. The Bible says, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. How many fathers does this guy have? What on earth is wrong with him? He's calling on his father to send him to his father's house. I want you to know Father Abraham is in his house. Oh my, oh my. He's saying, my father, send him to my father's house. I want you to know, I love my father, I love my mother, but this father here, he surpasses them. He surpasses them. He surpasses them. The Bible says he's in hell. Now he wants to intercede for his father's house. Now he wants to say, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers. And he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. I want you to know, you better be careful. You better be careful. All you're leaving behind is an inheritance for a house here. I'm establishing a legacy so that my children can activate their house in heaven, not here. Uh, my father established, this is legacy. This is not inheritance. This is legacy. What is legacy? I can activate. I can grab a hold of. I can lay hold of. I can pull it into my life because I saw it in my father. What will they see in you? What will they know of you? You paid the bills, yes. Yes. Did you show them eternity? You took them to the best hospitals, the best schools, when they needed whatever they needed. You gave them the braces so their teeth don't end up like mine. But did you give them salvation? Did you show them what is most important? You make sure that they're studying during the week when they're at school, but they're not at Sunday school. And then when it's exams, they can't come to church. Your exams are going to take you to hell. Now, mind you, my children double up when it's exams because they need to still be in church. They pull a double shift. They want to play sport, go play your sport. But you're still in church. I don't care whether you walk in here smelling because you were perspiring the whole day playing sport. You will get to the house of God. You are making the fact that they can't shower the reason they don't get to church. Hey, Harbor Lights, wake up. Ye moet wakker word, man. The Bible says, watch it. Send somebody. To testify to them, lest they come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Hmm. Okay, but hold on, Moses is dead. <laughs> Moses is dead. Who's he talking about? Moses is the picture of a pastor leading a people through the wilderness. Moses is a picture of a pastor that left what he had to go back to bring a people out, to redeem a people. Oh, I know what I'm talking about, Arbalites. Uh, Moses is a picture of a pastor that will suffer alongside the people, forsake the promise to get a people to the promised land. 
The Bible says, what is Father Abraham say? There's already a pastor there. There's already a prophet there. They don't listen. Watch this. And he said, no father. But if he goes to them from the dead, they will repent. I want you to know no miracle is going to change the fact that you decline salvation. He is saying, if, if they see a miracle, so if, 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 if he goes back, arises from the dead, they will believe him. Watch, watch Father Abraham's response. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses, if they do not hear Myron and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. If they do not hear Myron and the prophets, they will not be persuaded, even though somebody arises from the dead. How can we get to this place where all we want is the miraculous? And even when the miraculous comes, we don't take salvation. They will receive the dead Lazarus returned back from the dead. But they will not accept the Savior who is Jesus Christ. The promise. The promise. Hubbleites, as I stutter to conclude, Yet again, as I fail to conclude yet again, I'm asking you, as we look at therefore we also, and as you stand with me this morning, what is your testimony? Is your testimony that you've received wealth, health, but not Jesus? Your lifestyle and how you live and how you deal with life and how you respond to Moses and the prophets will tell us whether you have salvation. Your heart's desire for diamonds instead of crumbs will tell us. This morning, God told me, give everybody under the sound of your voice a chance to accept my only begotten son. Before you conclude on faith, before you conclude on faith, before you close this whole discussion on faith, he said to me, Give everybody under the sound of your voice a chance to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The promise himself. The promise himself. This morning with your eyes closed and your heads bowed. Nobody looking around. Some of you might say, but I've, I've been a Christian my whole life. But are you going to heaven? Some of you are saying to me, Myron, I come to church week after week after week. That's not my question. My question is... Are you going to heaven? Will you be Lazarus or will you be the rich man? If you're feeling convicted this morning, I want you to lift up your hands. Nobody looking around. I don't care who you are. Whether it's me, the pastor of this church, that's lifting up his hand, or whether you are a visitor here this morning, it's your first time in church. I'm asking you if you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. It's the biggest step you'll ever take in your life. It's bigger than anything you'll ever do in your life. Accepting Jesus. Accepting Jesus. There is nothing bigger than accepting Jesus. Nothing bigger. Nothing bigger. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman hears my voice and opens the door. Those that are lifting up their hands this morning, they're opening the door. Father, this morning there are hands raised. And mine is also this morning. Mine is also this morning. I raise my hand, Father. I say to you, with everyone that has their hands raised in this house this morning, we don't want to be the rich man. We don't want to be the rich man. If it means we end up in hell, I'd rather die poor, destitute, without anything of value here on the earth. Father, even if nobody can bury me here on the earth, nobody can bury us here on the earth. Father, that's okay. Let angels come and take us home. We're not choosing wealth on the earth. Father, we know that you will bless us. We know, Father, that you'll take us to places that we never dreamt of on the earth. But, Father, we will never choose those places over you. We will never make those things the promise. Oh, God. Oh God, oh God, oh God. But the promise is Jesus Christ who makes a way for us to go to the Father. 
Oh God, I pray here this morning that everyone that has their hands lifted up would take the way that gets them to the Father. Take the way that gets them to the Father. Take the way that gets them to the Father. Take the way. Take the way. Take the way. Oh God, I pray, I pray that none of us would be in Hades looking into heaven. None of us would be in Hades staring at the bosom of Father Abraham, at loved ones that stood alongside us, but now in heaven and we in hell. Father, I pray that none of us would be on the wrong side of that gulf that none of us would be on the wrong side of that chasm, that none of us would find ourselves in hell. Today, Father, we choose our King of kings and our Lord of lords is our Savior, Jesus Christ. We declare him openly. We confess his name openly. We will talk about him at every chance we get. We will speak his name wherever we are. We won't speak about our money. We won't speak about our cars. We won't speak about our houses. We won't speak about our prosperity. We won't speak about our healing. But we will speak of Him. Oh God, we will speak of Him. We will speak of Him. Your word declares, if my name be lifted up, I will draw men unto me. I pray for a generation that would lift up your name. Lift up your name. Lift up your name. Lift up your name. When I came here 15 years ago, I said that God was going to bless many people in this house. Not one or two, but many. God was going to take them to a place of success, influence, wealth. And God has done that. But as I step into the next, I don't know how much of time God leaves with me here at Harbor Lights. But however long that is, God has told me that he's opening up a gateway for healing in this house. He showed it to me, but he's made it clear to me. He's made it clear to me that the healing must also end with salvation. It must end with salvation. Why have I been preaching the way I have? Why did he stop me this morning? Why did he interrupt what I was going to deliver in this house this morning? Because he wants salvation here more than the healing. He's about to open up healing in this house. There are, there's about to be a great manifestation of signs and wonders, of divine signs and wonders in this house. But it will not be here at the expense of salvation. It will come and salvation will come with it. You hear me this morning, Arbalites? I declare in this house this morning, God is opening it up. He's opening it up. He's opening it up where people will come in sick and go home healed. But they won't leave without Jesus. They won't leave without salvation. I don't want them just coming here sick and going home healed. I don't want them coming here poor and going home rich. I want them coming here and going home with Jesus. Let that be your heart's cry also here this morning, my intercessory group. I want you to intercede that yes, we will have the divine manifestation of signs and wonders, but it must end with salvation. Every one of them must end with salvation. Every one of those people that has the manifestation of a divine sign over their lives must end in salvation. Must end in salvation. It must end in salvation. I want anybody that's praying about the ministry of this church to pray about salvation over everything. I'm not saying you mustn't pray about the other things also, but I'm saying you must conclude with salvation. We must have salvation. We must have salvation. And when I say we must have salvation, we must have Jesus because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman comes to the Father but by him.